Hello viewers, today we are going to study about the cocktail party written by T.S. Eliot. The objectives of the lesson are to understand the significance of the characters in the drama, to comprehend the theme and symbolism in the drama, to learn about the importance of poetic drama. Edward and Leon Chamberlain's were unidentified guests at the party. Celia, Edward's mistress, Peter, Julia and Alex are the main characters in the play. Edward and Leon and Peter Quelpy represents an average of mediocre persons with low level of spiritual elevation. Secondly, the characters that has a high level of consciousness are represented by Alex Julia and Sir Hercourt Relly. Finally, Celia, an exceptional character and potential saint who represents Jesus Christ himself, who has influenced the life of an average humanity in every age. The play is also a significant example of poetic drama and comedy of manners. The Chamberlains, Edward and Leon Chamberlain, belonged to the aristocratic society. They were separated after five years of bitter marriage. As in common in marriages, they too indulged in burking and led a miserable life. They blame each other for their inability to love one another and others. In order to prove their capability of loving others, they have clandestine affairs and violated the marriage bed. Edward flirts with Celia and Leon plays round with Peter in their social circle. The couple's relationship deteriorates. Living under the same roof becomes unbearable for them. In desperation, Leon turns to Julia for advice. At this point of time, the psychiatrist Sir Relly appears and suggests that Leon must disappear from Edward for the time being. Leon's sudden act of disappearance affects Edward badly. He realizes that he has taken his wife and himself too much for granted. His dependence on her is intolerable for him, but equally intolerable is living without her, especially in the social circle. The shock of Leon's disappearance leads Edward to self-exploration, a spiritual rebirth. At this stage, he is counseled by Sir Relly, who sheds light on the human follies and virtues that constantly changes. He says, understanding oneself is an endless process. Frankly, you know, neither you nor your wife, so you have to join with her again to identify it. After much contemplation, Edward renounces his mistress Celia and his honest introspection guides him to align with himself. He gradually identifies himself. His union with Leon, after her brief absconding, dissolves his true self and realizes that a fictitious love is forced upon him by the lady. The new life of their choice. They embark a new life with more maturity and spiritual understanding. They are advised to be at peace with each other and work out their salvation with diligence. Having reconciled to the situation, they prefer an ordinary life. They make the best of the bad bargain and begin to live with spiritual awareness. Celia Copplestone is the second significant character in the drama. Celia Copplestone 
is a young lady of immense appeal in the social circle of the Chamberlains. She is Edward's mistress and is so desperate to see the divinity in him. Celia approaches Edward soon after his wife deserts him but is shattered when she learns that he prefers Leon to her. A rude shock, Celia sheds off her illusion about herself. Initially, she tingles with mortification but soon recovers and discerns the world of unreality. The first sign of spiritual awakening in her is an awareness of solitude, realizing that all relations of friends and humans are mere illusions. She feels it is delusive to talk to anyone. The second sign is a sense of sin which is strong in her despite the fact that she has always been taught to disbelieve in sin. Being a member of a sinful society, she suffers from a feeling of sin. Eliot rationalizes Celia's character by making her prefer the life of a saint after her spiritual awakening so that she can confine herself to loneliness and communion. At the time of her austere pursuits, nursing sisterhood, she is killed by natives. Significance of Celia's character Celia revolutionizes her mind soon after shedding off her illusions about her aristocratic society and is radically consistent to the new role she plays. She was more conscious, spiritual, more aware than others and so she paid the highest price in suffering. Her painful death is not an easy morbid aestheticism. It is said that her horrible death is a dramatic necessity. It is necessary to bring home to the readers the real significance of her choice. Julia and Alex In the beginning, neither Julia nor Alex create an impression on us as persons of great quality. Julia seems to be a feathery-minded, obsute lady who constantly forgets her property and pops in to get it and becomes a source of fun to the audience. During any conversation, her mind seems to wander and her power of cognizance is the feeblest. Similarly, Alex seems to be an officious, interfering, good-for-nothing fellow who boasts of expertise in cooking but makes a mess of the dinner he cooks for Edward. However, his sincerity is above doubt. He is genuinely eager to help Edward. Likewise, Julia's real disposition is hinted at from the very beginning. Though Edward calls her a dreadful old woman, her true insight into the problems of Chamberlain's discloses her personality. Eliot draws out an excellent comedy from her character. Frankly speaking, she has a degree of perception far beyond our expectations. Relly Relly's role in the play is of the uttermost significance. He stands for the modern substitute of the priest. His psychiatric coach is the substitute for the confectional box. The mystery of his presence in the beginning of the drama slowly unravels itself. He has a drinking session with Edward and sings a hilarious drinking song. However, the serious side of his nature is soon hinted at in the advice and guidance which he gives to Edward. In contrast to the humor that appears obviously on the surface, 
the play carries a serious theme underneath. Sir Raleigh's character is a substitute of Hercules in the Ephedurus play of Achilles. Like Hercules, he brings back the life of the inhabitants of the modern spiritual wasteland, but not by the use of physical force in the manner of Hercules, but the force of the spirit and the mind. He merges the comic and the serious elements of the higher intelligence and sensibility very skillfully. He helps the various characters in the play to overcome the indifferences to each other and their misunderstandings and help them in establishing a foundation on which they might build their future. Peter Quelpi Peter Quelpi is an emotional and rather affected young man belonging to the social circle of the Chamberlains. He has artistic taste and is interested in music, poetry and film making. He admires Celia and would seek her hand if she had paid attention to him. Celia's refusal to accept him makes him work out his own spiritual salvation which lies in making a choice and accepting all the limitations of that choice. He is largely mixed up about his choice, either to stay in England and take pleasure in imaginary rapport with Celia or to go to California to pursue his career in filmmaking. Eventually, he prefers Hollywood. His life enriches itself by the sacrifice of Celia, her martyrdom melts down his self-assurance. Finally, he realizes that his self-interest will never gratify Celia. Eliot contemplates over the problem of poetic drama. In the modern age, in his numerous essays, before taking to the playwriting, he deals with Elizabethan and Jacobian dramatists and on the theory of poetic drama. The cocktail party is a landmark in the history of poetic drama, as Eliot comes very near to solving problems. Finding an appropriate theme and a suitable medium of communication are the main problem of poetic drama. Traditionally, mythologically and historical subjects were concerned suitable for poetic drama. Eliot has chosen a medieval theme for his first play, The Murder in the Cathedral. But soon he realized to revive the poetic drama, the play must be a reliable contemporary theme so that the audience can consider it as its own. Thus, Eliot has taken a contemporary theme for the cocktail party with urban and sophisticated characters of his town living in our own world. He has succeeded in demonstrating the poetic play could be written successfully on contemporary subjects. The aristocratic characters in this drama are quite familiar in the modern world. Since contemporary audience is used to pose, the dramatist should follow the aesthetic rule of using the minimum of decoration. He is aware that he must use flexible verse in every scene. He has gone back to the root principle of English prosody, organization by stress and devised a line of varying length, but a fixed number of stresses, normally three. He has used a language and a verse which has grown out of the contemporary idiom and rhythm. Here Raymond Williams words on Eliot are significant. 
His development of flexible, lucid verse manner based very closely on speech and yet capable of the greatest precision and distinction is unquestionably a major achievement. Moreover, he used extreme austerity in the use of imagery, so that as he himself tells us, it is an open question if there is any poetry in the play at all. In this way, he could avoid the use of prose altogether. It is a remarkable achievement and hence the significance of the cocktail party in the history of poetic drama. In short, through the cocktail party Eliot shattered various prejudices against poetic drama and showed that it can meet prose drama on its own ground and also demonstrate that its range is much larger. Like that of his other plays, T.S. Eliot is able to communicate the theme of spiritual discipline in the life of a common man and a saint to a larger audience. Besides entertaining, the cocktail party has dramatic effectiveness. Primarily, the play deals with the different levels of spiritual experiences of the saint and of ordinary mortal. To keep up the interest of the audience, the player has enough of surprise and suspense. In general, the play is very complex as it has many layers and each layer has profound meaning. There is a wide scope of interpreting the play in several levels and a number of themes and ideas contribute to the richness of its texture. That's why it is criticized by various critics. The play is said to be a study of sense of spiritual isolation and loss of personality. A study in the failure of natural relations. A study in various kinds of self-deception in the modern age. However, the central theme of the play is the significance of the choice. And the other theme is how the choice of individual or the saint is socially significant as it influences and enlightens the lives of ordinary men and women. Indeed, the play shows the different levels on which a choice can be made. By placing Edward and Leon in a life of routine in Act 3, Eliot emphasizes the theme of the play that they have to make the best of the bad bargain in the world full of fluency, violence and stupidity. Celia's choice strengthens the theme of the play. She chooses the way of martyrdom and is crucified like Jesus Christ. And her crucifixion brings peace, harmony and unity in the life of chamberlains and their friends. Celia's irrevocable and irreversible choice is significant as it indicates her higher spiritual level and the choice influences the lives of others. In spite of having a strong religious message, the play is not deficient in the amount of entertainment. It offers moreover, it's highly amusing. The source of the cocktail party is taken from Achilletus, the Greek drama of Ephedesus. However, Eliot has given a new interpretation and integration to the plot and its basic symbolism of spiritual death and rebirth. The origin of the story taken from the Greek drama Achilletus has been so well concealed that the source could not be recognized 
until Eliot himself pointed it out. Even the guardians of the play, Sir Relly, Julia and Alex have been made members of the Chamberlain's social circle and thus have been given natural grounds of their presence. In Eliot's play, Sir Relly plays the role of both Hercules and the Ferris, very significant characters in Achilletus. Sir Relly's role gains significance in the cocktail party as it symbolizes the spiritual savior. Furthermore, he symbolizes the priest and the father confessor and his consulting room, the confessional box. He is a doctor who creates wonders with his knack and brings about spiritual salvation. Eliot successfully merges the symbolism of classics of Christianity with that of the modern science, the new science of psychiatry. The presence of the unidentified guest symbolizes the eruption of unknown forces into our lives disturbing our feelings and comfort. Both Leon and Celia, the wife and the mistress of Edward exemplify Achilles in the Greek drama. Celia symbolizes martyrdom and the sacrifices of Achilles. Eliot successfully transforms the characters and gives a symbolic significance to them. Edward and Leon are the counterparts of Admetus and Achilles in the Greek play Achilles. Leon, like her counterpart Achilles in the Greek drama, dies too. But it is not a mortal death, a casting off of the other self for her husband. The guardians, Sir Relly, Julia and Alex, symbolizes the destiny or God watching over erring mortals and setting them on the right path. They symbolize the super elements always hovering around us and influences our lives in some mysterious manner. Edward's consultation with Relly is almost a parody of the accepted pattern of psychoanalysis. Today we have learnt about the different characters, the main characters and the other characters who have helped the main characters to transform their life. T.S. Eliot through this cocktail party has brought out the different characters or the different personalities that one encounters in the modern age. Thank you and see you in the next session.